welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Game in the Max and part 9 of our Hearts of Iron 4 Old World Blues Enclave Redux mod. So, in the last episode, uh, we came over, we defeated Ourobrewers, the Realm of Diana, and we also defeated, uh, uh, who was this, the Crazy Horns, because they declared war on us. We gave back Eagle Rock to Eagle Rock, and we managed to secure the She as part of our nation um for some reason diana's realm has lost these territories here or no they never had them i lied sorry I was thinking about something else but you guys are pretty useless right now you don't have enough manpower to do pretty much anything um Ouroboros wants to declare war on the dead horses, which I will uh, try to secure for them. For some reason, I gave them Rock Springs, which was nothing a part of the territory I wanted, but Scavenger's Triumph, we get Naval Doctrine. And go up to the north. Power Armor. And then we got one day for all of these. It's Helios 2, Integrate, or Irrigate, which needs a lot of money. All right, there we go. Pause the Navarro, or the Yavaro Memorial. Today, the president, I got that name wrong the entire episode, even with people pronouncing it for me. Uh, the Navarro Memorial. Today, the president addressed a somber formation outside the gates of the former Enclave, former Brotherhood of Steel, former New California Republic. Now returned to Enclave Base Navarro. The memorial was dedicated to the brave men and women of the Enclave who gave their life defending the base against the combined NCR uh, Brotherhood of Steel assault, allowing for the President and the esteemed and special guest command Sergeant Major Arch Dornan to escape to the Sierra Army Depot, allowing the American dream and the Enclave dream of restoring America to live on. The event was primarily attended by Enclave personnel from the Sierra Army Depot. The VIP attendees included a few members from the reformed New Reno Gangsters, the Mayor Daglo, and some members of the Followers of the Apocalypse. Citizens are allowed access to the memorial at all times, but the U.S. Army engineers have said the rest of the base is off limits due to the security and integrity concerns after the base was nearly destroyed by the Brotherhood of Steel members during the NCR Brotherhood War. They may, they may be gone, but they will never be forgotten. Gained 10% 10 per, 10 stability, excess legitimately current into base stability, plus 8%. All right, the Fran San Francisco Mint. With the reproduction of the U.S. dollar, many have been scavenging around the pre-war sites for hidden stacks of greenbacks, the once useless Federal Reserve notes now seen used once again. However, we can't rely on these pre-war notes forever, and it will only be a matter of time before someone counterfeits them. Unfortunately, we have just what we needed to recreate a new series of U.S. dollars right here in San Francisco. The United States Mint Branch Service branch office in the city was largely ignored by scavengers and she due to the low amounts of supply, high security, and uselessness of the dollars inside. Now the presses are returning to life once more as a new era of U.S. dollars enters the post-war era. Add San Francisco Mints, which gives us trade tariffs plus 2%. The sins of our past, if we didn't have enough problems on our, uh, on our hands, it seems that the super mutants mistook our kindness for weakness, but few remain that didn't flee north to the Warren or the east have congregated in the North Diablo range near the old Mariposa military base, which anyone with a hint of historical knowledge knows just exactly what was born there and was still buried underneath of it. The Brotherhood and the NCR closed the base off against anyone who dared enter. However, we're too overstretched dealing with the collapse of the NCR to post these kinds of numbers. We had hoped to ignore it and prevent it. It doesn't exist, but we're getting reports of super mutants stealing livestock and raiding caravans. It's only a matter of time before they start abducting wastelanders and raiding the outlying towns. Maybe accepting them was a mistake. Uh, Mariposa becomes the victory point in Northern Diablo Range and gets the mutant mecca. The City of Angels, the Boneyard seems like a graveyard that stretches for miles into the hot sun but the americans find a way and the boneyard has prospered as part of the ncr hayes intended to set up a, a department of public art and entertainment in the city to serve as a nucleus of america's entertainment industry but as part of that development we need to decide whether to change the city names we can change the name to los angeles adds two civilian workshops we can keep it as the boneyard or the cities of angels for those who didn't make it and those who keep trying to i oh, will just rename it los angeles not forgotten, in the end, there could never have been a peaceful integration with the NCR. It was a pipe dream. NCR leadership was hell-bent on destroying the Enclave and the American dream, and our own Navarro survivors were hell-bent on revenge of what the NCR did and kept on doing. Our armies clashing was nothing more than the culminate, culmination of 30 years of being hunted, killed, and resentment. 
However, the trail from New Reno to Shady Sands is littered more than just enclave bodies. Honest NCR soldiers guilty of nothing more than doing their duty lay beside them disproportionately. So many were fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters. Their loved ones they left behind are our citizens, and what is worse, there are thousands more who are wounded. We can blame the NCR government all day, but it will turn into nothing more than hollow words, especially when you realize we wanted the war with the NCR just as much as the NCR did. We can do right by those affected by the war and agree to support and assist system, but doing so could tax our system and possibly open the door for fraudulent cases, tying up legal matters as we investigate those who attempt to take advantage of our generosity. Institute the Bear Fund, which gives us damage to garrison negative 3%, resistant activity chance negative 4%, trade tariffs plus 5% uh, for 100 days, and we get more stability, or just enough to lessen the blow. No, we'll do that. Institute the Bear Fund. We have so little war support, it's crazy. The Mutant Mecca, scraping together a mix of army volunteers, mercenary caravan guards, and local militia, we've surrounded the super mutant hovel at Mariposa. They've barricaded themselves in, and some of the less intelligent ones have taken pot shots at us, and we're on alert for night can activity, or night can operate at night. The intelligent super mutants are willing to negotiate, claiming that they just want an honest, peaceful town where super mutants can live free for, of prosecution or oppression. Uh, they can negotiate the end of a laser rifle. Or find a negotiator. We're sending someone in to negotiate. The launch code's detected. Now that we've liberated Navarro from America's enemies, the Army Corps of Engineers is going through old records and have come across something interesting. They managed to find the launch codes for missile silos. Although most of those codes were lost during the war or after due to vault tech subversion. If we ever find missiles that weren't used, it could become in handy. Wait, they should probably work in Ashton. Okay, there's some missile silos here. The reformers were taken. The Three Rivers Declared War on Standing Rock. We've done the United States there. Let's start restoring the Vero. Let's see. Augur Murphy. John Yeager. None of you look very good to me. We've got so many guys here. Followers of the Apocalypse, Gunrunners. Major businesses. Uh, we're sending someone to negotiate. Reluctant as he is, Marcus has answered our request to negotiate on our behalf. Turn out our goodwill towards super earnest, earnest respect, something that doesn't happen all to you. Often, he says, traveling from his home in Jacobstown, Marcus has effectively returned to the place of his birth, but being let in with a small delegation of our own, the terms of the negotiations are we cannot know what they are talking about until a deal is reached and they won't shoot at us, which is all the same because volunteers for storming the base keep arriving by the dozens every hour. Let's hope they come to a deal. Build where we can build. Dentata, who? Oh, the Navajo? Why would they go to war? A deal has been struck. After several days of negotiation, Marcus and our team emerged and announced a deal has been struck. The supermoons have agreed to stop raiding the local ranches and caravans for regular shipments of Brahmin and Bighorners. Several more intelligent ones have proposed they could hear the livestock themselves. And for cheaper than the Brahmin barons 
that still hold a grip in Northern California, but even chase down and eat Raiders and NCR Rebels for a prize. Finally, some of the more aggressive elements of the Super Mutants have agreed to fight as auxiliaries within our armed forces. Given the net intelligence and aggressiveness of the most Wayne Slanders, we're not expecting much of an issue in integrating them into the army. Uh, we've got them on our good, on our side, good enough. We add Super Mutant auxiliaries, echoes of something, Horrigan. Mara pose it right here. Cool. Economic resurgence in San Francisco. And we got their navy too. Which we'll put you all with the scouting fleet. You're a giant scouting fleet. You can go with the big fleet. You can also go with the big fleet. And you can go with the big fleet. Alright. Everybody merge. Everybody merge. Commander. Fleet protector. Chief engineer. rather have something else but let's have you all start training make sure that all of these can be used naval bases let me see what yours is for two and yours is three. Oh, Los Angeles is ten, so. Then we can build the Thousand Oaks up as well. Should be a bunch of these ready. We can install police force. Should be fine. TV Town can get a railway. We're restoring all these bases here. Let's see. Opens up you guys. You. It's going to take so long to get all these built. Which all I've got is time anyway, so. Perfect. Restore Navarro. We've retaken Navarro, and for most of the older members of the Enclave, it holds more than just simply taking back some land. After the rig went down, the base went from simple refueling outpost to a fortress and was our last stand before we were scattered. It was here as the hundreds were lost their lives to the NCR Brotherhood, and it was here that Doran left the exodus into Nevada uh, that planted the seed of our return. Many of the survivors of the battle broke down when they saw friends and family die. Others seemed to be at peace, knowing their sacrifice wasn't in vain. Many of the dead were dumped into a mass grave, and the Army Mortuary Affairs Division is going through and identifying them for proper military burials. All this is strengthened and resolved to see Navarro transformed into the largest base on the west coast, a massive installation whose size would rival that of Shady Sands. With a shovel in hand, the Army Engineer Corps is ready to begin. From the ashes of Navarro will rise. Let's expand the base. Restore their underground. Ship repair. Has a bunch of howitzers. Local population, radar station. Uh, we can do the underground and the name. I don't really care about the rest of that, though. There's coolant systems for our robots. Let's do the Century Mark 1s. Got 300,000 manpower right now. Diana. Finally has some. Uh, happy holidays to pre-war Carol Fades as President Grandin comes on the radio. My fellow Americans, 
we've been through a lot the last few years, but I think we've remembered for the first time in a long time what binds us together instead of what blows us apart. Whether we light a menorah or go to church, worship an unexpected, unexploded nuclear bomb, we all base our faith in love. So for the new year, let's res resolve to give ourselves to be our brother's keepers, to be our sister's keepers, to be ex excellent to each other. If you do worship an unexploded nuclear bomb, please give it to us. <laughs> EDE, play Christmas Roads. Game base 5% stability. Make sure your sound is on and your music's off. Unless you're like the Legion. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna turn my headset off and hopefully this music stops. I'll turn it back on in a few minutes. Okay. So hopefully you guys don't have to hear that. Uh, I'm like a thousand percent sure that's copyrighted anyway. So I won't hear anything for a few minutes. The Navajo, the Navajo were never one of Kaiser's ideals as far as they were concerned. Their alliance was out of necessity and given how Lanius treated the Apache in New Mexico, it was some good foresight for now. Times have changed. We reports that the Navajo are firing on legionaries and Legion has responded in kind. Despite the prowess of the Navajo, it won't be long until Kaiser's sheer weight a number overwhelms them. Hundreds of years of culture, tradition, and history that survived our own actions in the 1800s and the Great War snuffed out by a man who sees himself as a god. It wasn't long ago that the Navajo were some of our best soldiers and marines, with the Navajo Co. remaining unbroken right up until the Great War. They counted themselves as Americans once. Maybe they can do so given the opportunity. Dispatch the diplomatic strike force. Oh, great. America survived too. That was the general reaction when the Enclave Vertebrates landed in the new Navajo chief. Hashke Nabash made it clear that the current situation with the Legion is the only reason he didn't order his snipers to shoot the pilots out from their seats. However, words had reached him about the developments in the West and that his own scouts have been observing us for some time. Last thing he expected however, was for us to arrive. Thankfully, the word out of Nevada and abroad made it clear he wasn't dealing with the, and we quote, enclave of legend and was willing to work with us to save his people. While some of his more ardent warriors will want to stay behind to fight to the bitter end than run, for him, seeing the survival and continuation of his people is more important. But the vertebrate capa capa uh, capabilities, we can ferry out as many as we can and provide cover fire to any attempts by Kaiser to deny him of his prize. Uh, get everyone out that we can. The flight of the Navajo. Preparations were quick. In an instant, hundreds of vertebrates took to the sky and flew to, towards New Navajo. Gotten in by Pathfinders and Navajo scouts, they landed in pre-designated zones to evacuate as many as they could. Well, just as many stayed to fight, just as many got on board. Women and children and the elderly, the culture, the history of the Navajo were boarded upon the vertebrate and ex excavated or evacuated as fast as possible. The Legion seemed to catch wind of this and doubled their efforts to reach the city, though airstrikes sent them reeling back to their positions. Last on board was Chief Hashke Nabash, who was urged to by his leaders to, to lead their people. The chief wanted to stay and fight, but relented knowing... What was about to happen would be a difficult time for the Navajo. He also knew that his warriors would flee to the hills rather than be captured, and that one day, one day, he would return. He boarded the last vertebrate out of the city and joined the rest as they made their way for New Reno. This land is where our roots are. Tommy Todicheni joins the Enclave Reconstruction Authority. The chief does as well, and we get 6,000 manpower. Awesome. Alright, <laughs> glad the music is over. I can turn my volume back up. Ready all the power grids. 24 more days on that. So we continue on. So we saved the Navajo. Get rid of you guys. Get rid of you guys. You. You. Let's do uh, we're done with that protected storage so we got 20 days left on that Let's power up all those power grids Do you want to see? I'm not going to switch Elise, Elise, uh, Ulysses out. We got Unit Leader Knight, Donald Scott, Paladin Keats, Tommy Todashini, and then I guess, uh, yeah, Chief is a commanding officer. 
Then we got the officer for Elder Angaharad. The Eagle Rock is starting to build a little bit of a military up. Our bros has finally started building her military up. Uh, the only one that hasn't is, of course, uh, Diana. She has no uh, manpower. Agent captured. Ooh. Pause. Must mount an operation to save him. Commencement ready. Take some couple days. The bone horde patrolling your neighbors. Because they hadn't went to war with each other. This is Enclave Maincom. You got Chinese power on them? I guess didn't realize the Chinese had power armor. So we can go all the way up in tech. Do the paddle wheel. The Roboco Assault Trons are coming. They're better than the tin cans that we've had. Let's go to Navy. We'll do the cutter hauls. Business favors, state run radio programs. Radioactive material leak confirmed. Our intelligence crew deployed to the structure's control room. Thankfully, managed to power on the old world, old pre war computers with the help of some portable fusion devices and already engaged in contaminating protocols. Power armor teams fitted with the heaviest radioactive protections are on their way with transport bots carrying equipment to plug any leaks detected by the system. And we expect minimal downtime in our observations. Indeed, the NVC officers will be pleased with the efficiency of their soldiers. Anti naval base. Naval base restore for Irwin. Yeah, we can do that. Production boost, which would be nice. Which we'll do. Uh, just do that. Nah. Well, we got two more days on all of these, so it's going to be a lot of reading. We can. Batch of three. She stocks at uh, this machine guns. Uh, she stocks at San Joaquin. Uh, the Army Depot means to stock and distribute arms and ammunition for Marines and soldiers in the lead up to the Sino American War. This never came to fruition. Much of the base of stocks were sent north to Alaska. However, with the creation of the San Joaquin estuary, the depot gained a new lease on life as a location next to the water meant that arms could be loaded onto boats from a secure and controlled facility and rapidly shipped to the Chinese theater across the Pacific. Post-war, the Xi raided it for arms and munitions, turned the depot into their primary arms manufacturing plant outside the city. Back under our control, it's once again delivering weapons and ammo to needy American soldiers. Good, good to hear. Reduces supply consumption. The stronghold of the Xi... In the decades leading up to the resource wars and the Sino-American War, the Army's been upgrading their small braces across the continent. And Camps Park was no different. A training facility, Camp Parks, was redesignated as Fort Parks and upgraded with traditional command and control facilities, barracks, and defensive hardpoints in the fear of a Chinese invasion of the West Coast. Sadly, the bombs fell before this was realized, though Fort Parks was left direct, like so many other installations, until the Xi came and pacified the base, using the facility as a stronghold, not only against the Master back in the, the uh, 2100s, but against the NCR and Brotherhood encroachment. Now under our control, once again, the base is being refitted as a training facility to assist our soldiers in what is expected in a post-nuclear urban environment. Did they have to put dragons everywhere? Give a boost to army organization and special forces cap. Protecting the Golden Gates to America, a combination of naval air station, Almedia, Treasure Island, naval base, and Hunter's Point naval shipyards. Despite its large size, it remains more a defensive position servicing the fleet before they move north to Kisap or south to San Diego. The creation of this base was a strategic projection of the Sacramento and San Joaquin estuary, and even today, the base still serves that purpose. After the war, the Xi cleared out the defenders and managed to turn the various parts of the base over to their own naval production. This is how we managed to take notice of the Xi, which was very unfortunate for the Xi and so very fortunate for us. Our engineers and Navy CBs are still c coming across the telltale marks 
of her sabotage efforts to ensure that she never left San Francisco by the water. The base is now operational again and is becoming a center point for the anti-pirate operations within the estuary and further abroad in the Pacific. How do we let the uh, Chinese submarine get this close? Give a boost to naval organization and repair speed. Uh, defending the Golden Gate, meant to be a modern day fort point. Uh, fort Baker was taken back over by the army and expanded upon to defend the San Francisco Bay from Chinese invasion, an invasion that never came. Had the Chinese done what was expected of them and invade California, they would have ran into a modern command post complete with up-to-date defenses, the best the army had to offer, and then sent back across the Pacific. Of course, we now know they instead opted for the cowardly option to invade Alaska, forcing our forces north. Post-war, the base was occupied by a strange cult known as the Hubilogists, who were then forced off by the sea, who garrisoned it to defend their base from the northern NCR encroachment. Now it is in our hands, and the army is keen to restore it to help control movement north and keep the city it watches over under wraps. Gives a boost to organization and special forces cap. The Mare Island Marine Barracks. The Marines were not going to see themselves left out of a fight against the communist invasion. They commissioned Mare Island Barracks to defend California and America itself. Sadly, the Chinese invaded Alaska. Undeterred, the Mare, Mare Island Barracks was further expanded and was turned into a gateway for the landings in Shanghai, with the Marines' 1st, 3rd, and 5th Divisions launched from here with the 2nd, 4th, and 6th heading out from Pendleton. Uh, Mare Island continued to serve the interests of the Marine Corps right up until the Great War. It serves as a raider headquarters for a while before the Shi took it over and the barracks was slated for occupation again once operations in the Navarro are settled in for eventual reconquest of San Francisco. Sadly, those never came to fruition, given the rig's destruction. Regardless, the Stars and Stripes fly over the base proudly once more. Impro uh, improves amphibious attack and special forces, and then the Dragons over San Francisco. NAS Live More was reactivated in the run-up to the American Sima Sino American War, and unlike many other bases in that buildup, this one served a purpose with the threat of the Chinese surface fleet. The Navy ins invested heavily in building up the base to defend against bombardments on, of American soil. However, after the Battle of Guam and the Chinese surface fleet sinking, NAS Livemore was turned over to hunt for Chinese submarines instead, given the existence of the Xi. They weren't all that successful. The Xi used the station as a southern air base to defend their home, though they have been grounded as the Navy wishes to reassert its claim over the station once more. I like Eagles better, improved ground strike in H generation, and then strikes their skies over California. Once a vital component of air mobility command, the resource wars changed everything with long range bombers and submarines launched aircraft. Travis Air Force Base was in perfect position to combat the rapidly escalating Pacific Air War. With bases like Mountain Home and MacArthur handling strikes coming out of Alaska, Travis sent fighters over the Pacific. Coordinating with the Navy, the, the fighters at Travis kept the skies over the American Pacific shores clear, and as such, it was targeted heavily by the Chinese. It's I ironic that the descendants of the Chinese, the Xi, managed to restore the base to working condition, though the stars and stripes fly over the base once more. Fly Dragons Fly, improve air mission efficiency and ace generation. There's so much reading with those, but that's okay. Let's see, the Legion's going to march again soon. We got one more year. Let's see. We can do detection, location training. guys we'll throw on some demolitions maybe even some fire teams we can give you some combined arms Uh, so about FEV, of all pre-war mal uh, maladies, the plagues, the wasteland, none has been more apparent than the FEV. What started as an earnest attempt to protect Americans from the Chinese biological attacks became a cat catalyst for nearly every major event in the post-war America. From the Master's Army to the little plague that hit Utah, FEV has brought nothing but pain and destruction to the waste. However, our efforts in Dugway Proving Grounds have bore some fruit. Working off our old research to omnicide, uh, cure the wasteland of radioactive maladies, scientists have managed to rework the deadly stuff into targeting certain wasteland horrors from Cazadores to death claws. Of course, anything involving requires presidential approval and the science team is awaiting a response. Well, if it can do some good, I feel like I just made a mistake. So 
So Aura Bros is raiding Eagle Rock. <laughs> right on. Justifying on these guys to then turn it over to Aura Bros. In March, they're annexing the Cypher War Band. Hmm. Let's see, you got Mexico. You got Kaiser's Legion. Then you have us. Navarro Underground. On the surface, Navarro was a sim was simply a vertebrate refueling station. Underneath it was a vast complex of scientific labs, armories, and repair shops that were the envy of anything in the wasteland. Made all the more impressive by the fact that it was secured by an advanced series of teleporters. However, during the season of Navarro, we were forced to sabotage the network to keep the NCR Brotherhood out. Seems the Brotherhood fixed a few things, but utterly destroyed it when relations with the NCR went south. Conditions have said that the network is beyond repair, since access to the main power system, as well as the other teleporter pads, are near impossible to get to access uh, to assess their damage thankfully we have access to the schematics thanks to a few enterprising individuals who took them when we played all those years ago not so thankful that means we'll have to do it the hard way and let's see we'll get there america's couriers oh so you get to your choice Band of Brothers. The Texaclave. Can do a nation reborn. Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, let's do the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Nuka Land's opening day. After years of construction, Nuka Land has opened to rave reviews and would be crushing competition if there was any other theme park in the waste. Casualties from the Death Call of Putting Zoo are within acceptable parameters. The haunted houses, feral ghouls provided excellent paramilitary training, and the rocket roller coaster is fun. For one brief day, American citizens get a taste of what a nation will be like when we finish rebuilding. Just obey park security. Uh, we finish with building... Nuka World, and we get stability uh, plus twenty percent. Awesome. Now we just need war support. Kaiser's Legion declared war on the Cipher War Band. I want to figure out how I can get away from collapsed economy. Oh, we can. Free fighters were annexed. Cannot replace collapse trade. Let's see, wood treatment. Let's do scorpions. We can go up to lifetime pensions again, which will cost us a lot, but that's fine. Deploy our extra 40 divisions. can go under 
uh, Paladin Keats. Up in the north. Our, our armies. Nice. Let's see what else we got going on. Uh, power all the grids. Chamber of Commerce. Let's see. Robotics. No. Construction wise, yeah, we're building a lot. Scavengers return empty handed. You're killing me, boys. And girls. You're killing me. See, open for business. It's open for business that helps with uh, some stuff. Enclave Reborn update. Thanks for playing our mod. You've received this event because trade laws are broken on this save. It's now fixed for new games, and this event will fix it on this save as well. Wait. Trade laws are broken on this save. It's now fixed for new games. Ah, so for collapse trade, we can't do anything. Oh, yeah, we can. That's weird. We can do open market, so we can do uh, made in the USA. We'll probably just do open markets. Major business, entry equipment, let's do docks, medical pumping. Should have been saving my, my, my PP, my political power. There's paddle wheels. Let's see. We can do ballistas. We can do subsurface propulsions. Getting the bear fund, which is fine. I don't want any of that being built. It's going to take forever to cancel all. I do need to start building some infrastructure though. Once I get some of these core territories up. There's so much to be done. No one get the effects of Indian spices. Oh, we saved our operative up in the troll warrens, which Oroho is starting to push back. Let's see. I kind of do want to go to war with the troll warrens. Let's see, root out resistance. Open for business. With the stroke of a pen, the president has decreed the reconstruction of pre-war businesses moving to merge pre-war with post-war. Companies like West Tech and RoboCo will stand once more alongside entities such as the Crimson Caravan and the Gunrunners. This move was met by praise from many and criticism from others. On the one hand, the return of industrial and technological giants to the pre-war would set America's leaps and bounds over any other entity in the waste. Likewise, detractors fear during this would lead to the same predatory practices of the pre-war era as well as 
emboldening current entities to continue their unethical practices. The president has assured that, that there will be several government and independent oversight commissions and panels to ensure that the private entities are following safe and ethical practices and assurance that won't lead to what became of the NCR in pre-war America. Another announcement that garners massive support from many of the smaller communities in America is that these corporations will be met with a wide volume of taxes meant to offset taxes for the lower class. Suffice to say, this last announcement was met with wide, widespread public approval, and any who voiced objections was quickly silenced. What could go wrong? A lot. Uh, let's see. Department of Energy. Sophisticated Industry and Exploitation Tech. Let's come over here. Do... Military propaganda because it only takes 15 days. Let's see. Coastal. Coastal controls. There's a cutter hall. Research. A uh, fair and lovely con country of Palestine joins the second coalition. Scrap boat. Where's that at? Right here. Brotherhood. It's military propaganda. Let's do Department of the Navy. Do civilian economy now. Oh, we need a bunch of money. A lot of money. There's the Scorpios. Thirty-seven millimeter deck guns. Waterproof ceiling. More HP. Save. Republic of Mexico declare war on the Sinola cartels. Uh, yes, yeah, so Santa Ana restored the Republic of Mexico. Hmm. He is going to be a challenge to fight. Yeah. We knocked out uh, the claim jumpers. Department of the Navy. Rebirth of the Marines. Super heavy hulls. Liberty ships. Large range optics. Testing results, work began in earnest as one of the abandoned vaults of California with the sealed atrium. The modified FEV strain was released on the chambers containing rad roaches, feral dogs, feral ghouls, and blot or bloat flies. The strain was to target bloat flies with the ghouls standing in as human surrogates. The modified FEV had no effect on the dogs, rad roaches, or ghouls, or uh, with the bloat flies dying off rather quickly. Continued tests provided the same result to the elated scientists, proving that FEV can be used to clear out some of the worst creatures of the post-war post -war world. More trust in another way, of course, ensuring that virus doesn't mutate as well as turning it into or turning it to target other creatures or lead to something entirely that we have no hope of combating. While nowhere near ready to release as such, it represents a major breakthrough in the FEV research. Well, some good did come of it. 
find it. You're good. You can save just a little more political power up. Diana's finally gotten some troops. Targeting systems. Assault the news. Construction wise, out of them. There's ballistas. A fifty seven millimeter deck gun. Oh, cool. We researched Enclave Destroyer right off. Make sure hydro jets. What's a nuclear hydro jet? Who knows? Must be some like crazy technology in here or something. Spies, no longer getting the effects of industrial support. Oh, we were supposed to switch you guys over like a super long time ago. And we can start building some salvaged cars, which I don't too much care about. Uh, what's else? Security Mark One robots. Can I trade Diana for that? That and that. It does gain her. Uh, Bunch of stuff, so we're gonna start lend lease. Gonna send her. Let's think. We're gonna send her a thousand support equipment, 500 of that. Looking for some of those worst power, like the worst power armor ever. Uh, not the Chinese power armor. Someone has to have it somewhere. Some strip power armor. NCR had a bunch of it. You can have 2,000 of the 9mm pistols. All these anti-tank rifles. It's a couple thousand pipe guns. You can have a thousand of those. I can't believe I can't find the NCR's power armor that I got. Oh, there it was. There's Scorch Sierra power armor. 500 of that. There it is. 
500 of that. And then since I'm benevolent, you can have like 500 of my CNC bots. And like 300, my protectrons. Send. And then Ourobros, start land lease. You can have all of your Mr. Handies back. Also have all of your Mr. Handy's back. There you go. Enclave here. Capture the war and the mutant armies of the Troll War have fallen to Ariel with the FEV filled caves surrounding Crater Lake becoming military occupied by the invading forces with the mutants within the war and being forced to flee their homes and retreat. Is there any future for mutant kind in the far north? Chosen ones back. <laughs> Nuclear hydro jet. Capital ship doctor medium hall five. Super. Six hundred naval experience. Cipher. Yeah, they have been justifying on us. I was actually hoping to take the troll warren. We should have. Montana chapter was annexed. Scrap boat hall. So we don't have to worry about that anymore because we already have the Enclave destroyers. Oh, I see that was the nuclear hydrojet. I got you. Let's do trebuchet. We can go down to, let's see, made in the USA. Uh, let's do open markets. at sea. There's an Enclave cruiser. Uh, nuclear Defense Operations Command. Santa Ana does have nukes. Better engines. Torpedo boats.
afraid. Yeah, and then uh, Diana. We'll send you. Is not doing much. I was hoping they'd build some type of air force. But they didn't. You guys at least did. Casings. Okay. All right, well, Troll Warren's been defeated. The Nuclear Defense Operations Command, pre-war what has been known as the Divide, was home to the Ballistics Defense Division Southwest Operation Command of the Commonwealth Ballistic Administration. Whoa. A mouthful, if there ever was one. Yeah, I was about to say that. Suffice to say, we aren't expecting to be nuked anytime soon unless it's ourselves. Instead, the base had the lo location of several of our nuclear silos dotted across the United States some of which were automated to build more nuclear missiles. We cannot begin to stress the danger of these weapons falling into enemy hands. When we can't answer the nuclear question later, we need to make it priority to collect and recover nuclear weapons across the continent before it is too late. But to do that, we need a base of operation, and the base is the old Ballistic Defense Division Operations Center in Hopeville. Since we've returned to the base, we've been hard at work getting it ready to resume operations once more. However, resources are starting to run short for the time being due to the other construction progress projects. And for now, we only have the resources to complete one project. The missile base, or the Air Force, let's do the missile base. Hopeful Missile Base was the Army component for the Commonwealth Ballistic Defense Complex and was tasked with maintaining the missiles and ensuring the base remained in a ready state in the Teutonic, unstable region of the Divide. Much of the base has been looted or scrapped, largely from the two communities that sprung up around the base in the intervening years. Thankfully, they, they didn't activate the nuclear warheads in the base because that might have caused some problems. We don't know exactly what our predecessors were thinking when they built a missile base near San Andreas Fault. However, records show that U.S. Army Corps engineers installed a series of s seismic sensors around the base. If they're tripped in the base would lock down to ensure that no missile was damaged. Apparently the back that this backfired as the sensors couldn't differentiate between the nukes hitting California and Nevada and an earthquake. Thus the base went into lockdown and never launched their deadly payload. We're sure China was very thankful. Regardless, the nuclear bombs had ironically enough st stabilized the region, though that doesn't mean we won't be restoring the seismic monitors just in case. Curiously noted that there seems to be residual se seismic activity coming from below. It might be old systems. We'll keep you informed. Cool. Let's see, our workhorse, naval dockyard output, let's do reform the foundries. In June we got six months till good old Kaiser comes to knocking. Air. Let's do fuel injection. Oh, here we go. Open for business. We can do medtech, general atomics, wants electrician, uh, West Tech, Lock Reed. Yeah, we'll do you. We'll do lock read first because we get ad technology, jet attack plane, jet bombers, jet fighters. I want to get the Brahmin Barons. Bunch of nukes. Go out with vehicles. We 
available all. We're building so many of these so fast. Whispers of hope, despite our current precarious position, there's are those that are taking our American dream. Uh, whispers of a new dollar spoken with no NCR loyalists in the room. So that's not what your government can do for you. We've already had that from the bow. Lockheed Aeronautics. Hello, America. This is your president speaking. Do you remember airplanes or jet planes? Maybe some remember the sight of vertebrates flying across the sky when the Enclave first returned to American shores. Um, I'm sure very few do, and I'm sure even fewer know when America was the birthplace of flight. Yes, that's right. The America, the Wright brothers, took their Wright flyer and for the first time succeeded in heavier than air flight. Of course, with the Great War, it was thought those days were long gone, but what if I told you the United States government has sponsored a school in Daglo at the old Lockheed Aeronautic Advanced Development Center? Also known as Skunk Works, Lockheed is accepting anyone with knowledge of mechanical and technical know-how to train the next generation of American flight engineers for free. Food and housing are available on site, and family accommodations can be arranged soon. America shall return to the skies above just as before. We gain Lockheed Aeronautics, which gives us air superiority plus 5%, bad weather penalty negative 20%, energy cell gain per, uh, per energy plus 10%, and trade tariffs plus 1%. Jet bombers, interdiction, jet striker, jet attack, jet fighters. Let's do West Tech for my power armor. Then I want to do General Atomics. Do the Freedom Foundries. Alright. Then we're going to go with Army Arsenals. Now that America has returned to its own shores once more, the Army is more than ready than ever to shed the single production lines of the rig and return to a powerhouse that is pre-war. Constrained within reason, of course, the Army has come forward with plans to revitalize the procurement industry as well as expand its production lines in-house. The proposals are Army Procurement Center uh, Command, which was traditionally developed new equipment for the Army, is, is instead aimed at restoring what once was. Another is the restoration of the Army arsenals across the United States, turning many of our old war installations into outright factory complexes of their own. And the development of these new factories will, can, of course, be overseen by the Army Corps of Engineers, who are already to begin work on restoring America's old factories. Let's do get the arsenals up and running. I like the Army Corps of Engineers, though, so we'll do that as well. Helps with construction speed and civilian factory use. Attack motor. The 90mm deck cannon. Ready up the power grid. It'll take 24 more days for West Tech. Now, production wise, that does remind me. Our bombers can do the jet bombers. And the monolith can be air defense, air attack, ground attack 23, ground attack 26. Do the jet attack. Plan. I'm getting industrial support. Republic of Mexico took the Sonoma Cartel. How long do we have on this? Just a few more days. Take the dead horses and give them to the Ouroboros. December's the when we have to get ready for the Khazar's Legion. Let's see construction wise. Oh, we've we've got so many more of those to go, it's not even funny. engineers. The last of the Enclave may be too much of our surprise. A decrepit old Enclave vessel was docked at our primary naval base. Stepping off was one of a salty bunch of sailors in Enclave naval uniforms, headed by a woman whose stare belied the experience her age begets. Providing the correct clearance code is none other than the crew of the USS Enterprise, the last ship of the Enclave Navy. Leading the ship was a self-styled Admiral Jean Richard, who promoted when the ship's commander passed away a few years ago. They've been serving as privateers for hire in the southern hemisphere after being deployed near Seattle when the ring went down. When the Enclave of America had returned, they set sail, and upon arrival, many wept tears of joy seeing their flag waving. 
Admiral Richard has offered her services to the President of the United States, seven years of experience about anything we can muster in the near future. Naval Experience 300, again, events the last of America's carriers. Along with Admiral Richard came her ship, the USS Enterprise, or what was left of it, last of the United States supercarriers. The ship was over 200 years old and had quite the story. Within her rusting halls are parts for no less than five other carriers that served in the Pacific Fleet when the bombs fell in 2077. Over the intervening years, the ship was instrumental in surveying and understanding the post-war world. It was the Marines and sailors aboard the Enterprise that established Navarro, uh, freeing the ship up from ferrying vertebrates to the mainland, and it was further spared when Richardson deployed it to the Los Angeles Boneyard when the rig went down. In the years since, the ship sailed south, hoping to sail around Cape Horn and linking up in the Enclave on the east coast. Sadly, a run-in with pirates in South America waters left the ship damaged and its commander dead. It was when his protege, Jean Richard, picked up her, our signal that she and her inherited crew made what repairs they could and sailed north once more. Now it's sit, listed heavy in San Diego Naval Base, where the ship itself can be refloated. Its age and stature of decay after 200 years of hard service leaves it useless as a warship, but that doesn't mean we can't use it. Turn it into a museum ship or scrap it for parts. Mm. Museum ship. What makes a superpower most... Nations can operate a navy host nothing more than a small flotilla of canoes or led by a clipper or a barge at most. Only largest or more technologically advanced like the NCR Brotherhood are capable of sailing actual fleets of warship with legion classes being an outlier. Aircraft are a full and dream for many nation or some are beyond their tribal existence with even the NCR struggling to field warplanes much to the determinant of the rest of their military. To merge the two into an aircraft carrier is such a laughable concept that most nations don't even bother. In pre war, it was a struggle to feel and maintain one carrier for most developed nations. Sailing one requires such as much effort, and many wasteland nations would expend their entire nation just to sail, destroying themselves in the progress. Of course, most wasteland, nation, most wasteland nations aren't the enclave. Our growing industrial might, vast resources of manpower, and technological mastery, we can vast if vast armada of warships and entire fleets of aircraft. With the return of the USS Enterprise, the ship computer databanks contain the schematic for the old vessel and allows us to rebuild. American carriers for the first time in 200 years. The last enemies of the Enclave tremble in fear when the sight of the Old World supercarriers appear off their coast, unleash their deadly payload. If there was ever a symbol that America was back, it'll be our aircraft carriers. We get Enclave carriers, and thus the Eagle would bomb. The defenses are online. When our jammer fields deployed around the base, defenses barely had time to come online before their targeting software was scrambled to heckin' back. Our soldiers had all the time they needed to set explosive and destroy the now useless turrets. Our scanners also revealed additional subsections of the base not accessible by personnel. We theorize they hold top secret equipment. Gain one research for land doctrine and doctrines from experience. Awesome. We can do automated research. Uh, there's another research slot. Revive the Air Force. General Staff. Motor pools. Coastal batteries, no. Naval officers, dreadnoughts. Do the Marine Corps return. Keep going. Uh, we can do General Atomics. Another 30 days. All the power upgrades. So yeah, enemy ciphers. Just start doing Kaiser's Legion. All right, we can finally go to war against the who are they? Dead horses. Blessings of Terra. And we're letting all our bros come into the war because we will uh, turn around and give all this land to them. 
West Tech, perhaps no other pre-war corporation had the effect of the post-war war, uh, world like West Tech. While many know them for having created power armor, which dominates the West like no other, the very few today know they were also responsible for the first evolutionary virus. That was West Tech's products that nearly saw the wasteland evolve into the monster's twisted version of Unity, and what saved it was in the form of T-51B suits. While we've effectively managed to bury West Tech's involvement with the FEV, we've restarted the company's largest producer of power armor in America, taking some of the load off our own military production lines and allowing limited sales to civilian users such as on ships, police force, or even in more remote areas of the country. We get trade tariffs plus 1%, power armor attack plus 5, speed plus 5, fire team attack plus 5, fire team speed plus 5, demolitions all right, plus 5% for attack and speed. Perfect. The Marine Corps reborn after the Great War. The military was downsized, much like the rest of the government branches were nothing more than pins on a uniform. With the Army taking the lion's share of the role, the Air Force was reduced to piling vertebrates. The Navy operated what few ocean craft were left and made the automated system defending the rig from anyone approaching. The coast was all was but uh, the Coast Guard was all but dissolved, and the Marines. The Marines fought tooth and nail to survive. Many of their members served alongside the Secret Service. Acting as grunts on special missions, others were in the likes of Granite Company, who were the primary defenders of the rig. President Granite remembers hearing the stories of Granite Sr. and himself always felt like he had a connection to the few and the proud. It was his distinct honor today at the headquarters of the firm, former 1st Marine Division announcing the re reactivation and expansion of the Marine Corps. In the evolving process, the Marine Detachment will be parsed out to active units in the field to develop Marine tactics in the post-war wasteland. These units will gain experience needed to form cadres of future Marine officers and NCOs that will eventually form the backbones of the Marine Corps. Add technology Marines with the Marine Gunners and the few in the proud. Uh, start doing the little blue book. North Coover taken in a raid. The capital of the Broken Coast Pirates, North Coover, fall into a raid party by the force of the Coover Union. Can the Coover Union hold on to the North Coover? Time will tell. Oh, yeah, so the Broken Coast is pretty much broken. <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse you. Why? Why would why? Well, the good news is there's no way for them to reach Arbros as of right now. Industry wise, I don't know, they can reach them. So dumb.
General Atomics with a fleet of robots and an army of workers. General Atomics has started working on restoring many of the still dilapidated areas of Daglo, New Reno, and beyond. Both the President of the United States and the newly commissioned President of General Atomics has expressed great interest in restoring America's great cities, creating thousands of new jobs, and providing a positive light for the, of the Mr. Handy model of robots. Production of which expected to restart in the coming weeks, with the personal units expected to be sold off once construction is finished. A spokeswoman for General Atomics has stated all weapons and combat procedures from the civilian models have been removed per safety request by several consumer protection organizations. Grant LG, uh, energy cell, or yeah, energy cell gain per energy plus ten percent. Trade of tariffs plus one percent. Military and civilian factory construction speed plus ten percent. Mock out the dead horses and then, uh. Enclave main com. Radio interception group. If you're wondering why I took those territories from them and then gave them these ones, uh, even though their claims are on uh, Tikaboo and uh, Dead Horse, is because they declared war on Kaisar's Legion, and if I would have gave them that to them, they would have fallen. Smart, right? The Legion marches, take Lubbock. Forces. Yeah. Contact lost. All right, send a rescue team. With that, I'm going to end the episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.